Hello and welcome to the Sparkling Autos YouTube channel for the fifth and final installment of this Honda Civic Resurrection. Having spent two very hot mornings deep cleaning and decontaminating this FK3 Honda Civic, it's time now for the finishing touches. So before applying any protection, I want to give it the best possible chance of bonding with the paintwork. And the best way to do that is with a panel wipe. Luckily, in keeping with the theme of this series, Garage Therapy have their own panel wipe and it just so happens that it's a very good one. I'm also going to use one of GT's own utility tiles, but this isn't absolutely necessary as a product like this can be used with any basic tile. Although my personal preference would be for a short pad cloth, nothing more than say 350 GSM, otherwise the cloth might absorb the product rather than spread it around and allow it to flash off naturally. Using a panel wipe couldn't be simpler, it is literally a case of spray and wipe. You're not trying to buff the product off, as the very action of spreading it across the panel causes it to flash off itself. Now some of you might wonder at this stage why I'm using a panel wipe when I haven't actually polished the car. Which is a good question as the primary purpose, or certainly the most common use of this type of product, is to remove any leftover polishing oils after a paint correction. However, if you think of it like this, it only takes a few minutes to go around the entire car, you don't need to use a lot of product, 2-3 to three sprays per panel, then suddenly it becomes a very quick to use and very effective paintwork cleanser. And even if it only gets you an extra week or two out of a spray in it, well surely that's worth 5 minutes. Did I mention how quickly it flashes off? But that's enough about panel wipe, it's time to rehydrate and get on to using something a bit more interesting. On now to the paintwork, and if I'm sticking with GT, then there's really only one choice for a job like this, and that's Sigma, or Sigma V2 to be precise. To apply the product, I'm using the 450 GSM Garage Therapy Dual Tile, which, as the name suggests, is a dual sided tile, and I'll come back to that one shortly. The plan then was to do a final buff with their final tile, which I thought might be needed in this heat, based on previous experience with the original Sigma formula, but as you'll soon see, it turned out this wasn't even necessary. So the dual sided tile, as expected, contains one shorter pile side and one plush side. I'm using the shorter side to initially spread the product, then, if needed, flip it to the plusher side to buff off. So let's see how it goes. 2-3 to three sprays per panel as always. Then gently spreading the product in a cross hatch pattern. There's no need for excessive downward pressure at this stage, I'm simply trying to get an even coverage for now. Interestingly though, as you should be able to see here, the product was actually flashing off as I was spreading it. I'm not sure if this was down to temperature, but that was very unlikely as this was still only around 10am and the car was still in the shade, which it had been all morning. But was this just an optical illusion? Well a quick swirly spinny folded cloth test should answer that question. Nope, no illusion, the slickness is definitely there. So this got me thinking, is it an improved product formula? Is an improved application then going to be offset with diminished durability? Well not according to Garage Therapy, in fact their website states the opposite and claims durability will actually be increased from 6 to 9 weeks. Now I'm not one to be a negative nilly, particularly when it comes to one of my favourite brands, but in my personal experience of about 3 years using Sigma on various vehicles, I've never known it the last 6 weeks on a single application, not without the need for some sort of top up, either with more Sigma or even their QD, and in the winter months, I'd be lucky to get any more than 2-3 to three weeks on the lower half of the car. 
What I can also tell you is that on the various V2 applications in the past 7 months since this was filmed, I still haven't really gotten any more than 3 weeks on the lower half, particularly in the winter months before having to apply more protection. As stated though, that's just my experience, but my experience is all I have to go on when I'm sharing my thoughts about a product. I love the slickness that Sigma provides, in fact it's one of the slickest out there, and I love the visible improvements in the gloss levels, but I don't get the durability that some people seem to, and I think it's fair to say that the application, certainly of the V1 version, is more sensitive to environmental factors than some of its rivals. That said though, on this occasion, when using V2 for the first time, I actually found the application couldn't be easier, so perhaps that particular issue has been resolved, and let me know in the comments if you've used V2 and had similar experience or noticed any significant differences, positive or negative, between the two versions. One thing that cannot be argued, this Aegean Blue Honda paintwork definitely looks much better for it. One final thought in this process before we move on, and that's on the GT Dual Tile. With a price of £4 each, this isn't just a cloth that'll be quickly relegated to tar removal duties, but for that £4 you do get a very high quality cloth, and combined with the Sigma V2, it does make this process all the more enjoyable and efficient. And as I finish off here by whacking the camera, it's time to move on to the next stage. Moving on to the glass and using the GT glass towel, which is also, like the dual towel, currently priced at £4 and just like the dual towel, certainly is a really high quality cloth and it's very well suited to the GT glass cleaner. My only issue with this glass towel is its shape. Maybe it's just me and I know I can be a bit odd, but I like my product cloths to be square so that I can fold them twice giving me 8 even sides to work with, but this one is a rectangle with a similar ratio to a drain towel and for me I just find that a bit frustrating. It's not a deal breaker by any standards, but for my particular methods and habits, it just doesn't really suit me. That said, these two products work really well together, and I've made no secret in the past that this is my go-to maintenance glass cleaner, and that includes using it in the house too, and on device screens, and chrome taps, and funny enough, my actual glasses. But let's not forget the main purpose, which is automotive glass, and one section of the car's glass that's often overlooked is the edge. It amazes me how many people neglect to do this, but it's the finishing touches like this that make all the difference. Granted, you may need to go over it a few times, especially as the glass moves more than you'd expect, which is perfectly normal by the way. If the glass was fitted too tight, it would more than likely shatter with minimal contact. But just look at how clean it is. You can even see a few minor bubbles in the factory fitted tints here. Once the edges are done, get the windows up and give the main pane more of the same. Mirror mirror on the door, tell them not to make these jokes anymore. One of the many purposes of my clean matador cloth, wiping the excess off the freshly protected paintwork. And this here is one of the many reasons I enjoy using this glass cleaner. I just love how quickly it flashes off without leaving any residue behind. And just to show that this product is actually capable of cleaning too, here's some what I presume to be bug remains that multiple cleaning stages still haven't lifted yet. 
and just leave the product on for a few seconds then wipe away. Although don't be like me and forget to get right into the edge. Much better. That just leaves the most hateful job of all inside the front windscreen. And then once that's done I can move on to the trim. Now onto this trim, but this is going to be very brief and for two reasons. Number one, I'm using a prototype product and I'm not saying any more about it, including who makes it. And number two, this was literally me messing around and trying a new process to see what difference it made. So as you can see with the footage sped up around 20 times here, whilst initially darker, once the product dried in after 3-4 to four minutes, the colour fades and the faded trim reappears. Only not quite, there was definitely some darkening, even if only slight, so I thought, well what if I keep just going over this over and over again for 20 minutes or so. And as you can see every time it did get a little darker and just a little bit fresher. But then I remembered that I wasn't getting paid for this job and that this was an added wedding gift for a friend. So I knocked that in the head and moved on to the tyres. So the final stage in this video, in fact the final stage in this whole series, is to get the tyres dressed. And no car looks complete until the tyres are finished properly. Now most of you will already be aware that the Garage Therapy Tire Serum is not sold as a tyre dressing, but as a tyre conditioner. And I've previously made a video on the benefits of tyre serum, which I'll link below. However, regardless of the product's intended use, it does still make an excellent tyre dressing to use as a one-off, just as I'm doing here. And that's the first coat done and buffed off, but before applying the second coat, as an added bonus, here's an incredible hack to save yourself over £50. If you know, you know, and if you don't know, don't worry about it. So now I'm just applying a second coat to the tyres. Is that absolutely necessary? No of course not, but from my experience, if you're coating tyres with this product for the first time, then a second application is highly recommended if you want the protection to last, or even just to get the finish for that matter. Then when it comes to washing the car in say 2-3 to three weeks time, you'll find the tyres are much easier to clean and may even have retained some of that satin finish. Of course, when you're doing this, it does no harm to go back and forth over the tyres as many times as you need to, to ensure an even coverage. Unlike body panels, your tyre surfaces aren't a flat sheet. They have a curved, textured surface containing important tyre information, and in most cases, unimportant decorative lines that serve no purpose other than to annoy the people who are trying to dress them. But also unlike body panels, your tyres aren't going to swirl up from contact, so go over them as many times as you like until you're happy. And then, once you are happy, leave it for another couple of minutes before lightly buffing off the excess. And make sure you remove any residue from the wheels too. Just don't use your best microfiber cloth for this particular job. And once that's done, it's time to put everything away, then stand back and admire the results from all of your hard work. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this video and indeed the end of this series. 
I'd like to thank you very much for watching, ask that you give the video a big thumbs up and of course subscribe to the channel and I will hopefully see you on the next one. Take care. I